Okay, so uh, we're wrapping up on Esther, and I'm going to give you a summary of Esther chapter 8. If you were reading uh, yesterday, you would know that in the very last verse of chapter 7, that Haman was hung on the gallows that he had designed, that he had made for Mordecai. So, es so chapter 8 starts with the king giving Esther the house of Haman, which probably was like huge and beautiful. So he's like giving her his mansion. And at this time, Esther reveals to the king that Mordecai and her are cousins. So during everything that was happening in the past seven, previous seven chapters, the king had no idea, had no clue that they were related. And it was probably Mordecai who kept this a secret. He was very secretive about Esther's relation to the Jews, which was probably a good thing because of what Haman was planning. So now Esther believes it's prudent, it believes that it's time to reveal to the king they're related. And at this time, the king gives Mordecai the signet ring that he had given Haman earlier. So if you remember that signet ring that the king gave Haman, I think it was um, in, in a previous chapter, he gave that to Mordecai. And this signet ring um, for, was, for one thing, it was an uh, indication of position. So this was kind of a promotion for Mordecai, who was being promoted to chief of the rulers, because that's what Haman was. And it was also a way for uh, Mordecai, any, someone who had that signet ring could then sign documents on behalf of the king. So it was like an official uh, signature. So the edict for destroying the Jews was still in place. So Haman was gone, but his plan, the law that he had written to destroy the Jews was still in place. So Esther came before the king. Uh, again, she came before him, um, fell down at his feet and began crying and begging him to kind of change what was going to happen. And again, the king had to hand out his golden scepter to indicate that she was okay for being in his presence. So he does that. And Esther pleads with the king to reverse the edict, the edict of the destruction of the Jews. And the king responds by giving Esther permission to write anything she wants and seal it with the king's ring. So write anything you want, says the king, and I will sign off on it. However, the king also reveals that the law, any laws that are written with the king's signature cannot be revoked. So that law for the destruction of the Jews technically cannot be canceled or revoked. That law is still in place. But you can write another law that effectively cancels out that law. And that's what Esther ends up doing. Um, but it's not actually her. In verse 9, it says that an edict was written according to all that Mordecai commanded concerning the Jews. So Esther, despite being the one to come before the king and get the permission to write the law, has Mordecai do the actual writing of the edict. And think about this. This was an extremely important decision and important that Esther got this right. This was a law that was going to save the lives of tens of thousands of Jews. And that's not something you want to get wrong. So Esther let Mordecai, who, had, who was older, wiser, and more experienced, and really showed that he really cared for and was um, very wise, you know, in general. He'd already shown that to Esther. Because of that, she leaves this important decision, this important task up to him. And I want, I want you all to think about in your lives, what is there, what important life-changing decisions or like very important responsibilities might you have that yeah, you can make the decision yourself, but it would really be better if you let those in your life who are older, wiser, and more experienced kind of help you or even make those decisions for you. Because uh, maybe that person in your life, maybe there's a parent or a grandparent 
or uh, or a pastor or an elder who you look up to as very wise and very experienced and and you know that they love you and are looking out for the best for you and when it comes to making life changing decisions like just completely important decisions or maybe very heavy maybe very hard tasks that you allow them to guide you in that process or even just do it for you maybe you don't even do it maybe um maybe in an important life maybe in an important life circumstance you you just let them take care of it um so i really want you to think about what that means to us today letting those who are wiser and older than us um and really more experienced help us with important decisions in our lives so Esther let her uncle, her uh, cousin Mordecai write the edict. And this edict, this new law, was published throughout the entire kingdom in every language. It allowed for the Jews to defend themselves by force on the day that Haman had planned that they be killed. And it says in verse 13, the exact wording is to take vengeance against their enemies. So Mordecai left the king's presence in royal robes of blue and white and a golden crown and a purple robe. So Mordecai definitely got a big promotion. And the city of Susa was shouted and rejoiced. And Jews everywhere were glad and declared a feast and a holiday. They were Their destruction was set in stone and now a new law allowing them to defend themselves. See, there was still going to be fighting. The old law didn't go away, but now they could defend themselves, and it was it was declared that they could defend themselves by force. And this was amazing news everywhere. And the, this chapter ends with something I thought was really hilar really funny. It says in the last verse that many of the peoples of the country declared themselves Jews for fear of the Jews had fallen on them. So everything that was going on was like so crazy and um just confusing that there were some people that just oh yeah we're jews yeah sure like they were they claimed to be jews because they were so afraid of them that they didn't they didn't want to get on their bad side so they they kind of like uh yeah we're jews just to kind of protect themselves so i thought that was a funny thing that uh, in chapter eight about the nature of people how i just thought that was funny all right so that's esther chapter eight um, hope you guys learn from it. I really hope you think about um, letting um, those who are wiser and more experienced in your life, people like your parents and your elders and your pastor, really want you to think about um, letting them help you on making big life change decisions. And remember to go back to them when something important comes in your life. Really hope you uh, learn from that. Hope you learn from the rest of Esther. Um, enjoy the conclusion to this amazing story, and I will see you later.